So I thought I'd bring you guys along here while I finish up all this intercooler piping on this uh, pulling truck. This is all uh, three and a half inch, 304 stainless. Um, I'm no expert at this stuff. I'm decent at fitting it and getting my joints nice and, you know, configured, but uh, I'm a pipe welder by trade. So to me, you know, what I'm more concerned about is what the inside of the pipe looks like and having a good cover pass on it. Where with this stuff, it seems like, you know, they're not, they, they want a full, fully penetrated weld. They want a fully penetrated weld, but you know, they, they're more or less, they want the outside to look really pretty. Um, and they're not, you know, to me when I'm welding it, I'm trying to, you know, have a nice build up root in there, a nice build up cover. And it's just, it's not what I'm used to, but, uh, with some practice, I think I'll get it down. But basically all we had to do here was we come off this charger. I had to roll the charger up, put a 90 on, um, leveled that 90, the face of that 90. And then this is just a rolling offset down to the intercooler. It's not a big deal. Once you figure out the math um if anybody's doing this kind of stuff at first there i was getting a little bit irritated and i had a pipe a pipe trades pro calculator you punch the numbers in it and it gives you the the miters the cut fit like everything it tells you it all it tells you what to cut the fittings at how long your run's going to be it makes it really simple but i figured i'd take you guys along as i um weld all this stuff up today get it all finished up for him kind of how i do it what my thought process is when I'm welding it um, and go from there. So this is all three and a half inch, three or four stainless. I've found one of the most important things with this stuff is getting a really good fit up. Um, if you can get the gaps, you know, extremely tight to where it, you know, there's no gap at all um, on your miters and get just real small tacks seems to help the most. The other thing that's extremely important is getting a really good purge using the Tycon purge plugs. Um, then I just taped this one off and I got the purge. It's about 15 CFH to where I can just feel it. Um, I poke a little hole in there, but uh, you know, I got a, I got a number 12 Furic cup and it's not quite big enough for this stuff. I ordered a, uh, I think it's the 18 or whatever the BB dub could be a 16. I'm not sure, but I got one of them coming. It should be here this afternoon. So I'm going to try it, but <clears throat> I got the flow on the cup. At, I believe it's right around 30. Um, it seems to be working pretty good. I could weld these in my positioner, but what I've found is when I can start here and just come here, you know, and just keep rolling it and taking my time and keeping the gas on it nice, I get a better result. I'll get a better, you know, I'll get full penetration on these. Um, I will weld, I weld the bellows. I weld these two bellow welds out on the positioner and I'll show you guys how I do that. And I weld these, this V band out on the positioner. This, this V band here is the uh, connection that goes to the S400 charger on this truck and they're a little bit different. So I have no way of really fixturing that. So I'll just weld that in position. And I got road on here, 309. Um, this V band is carbon steel. You can't get them in stainless. I can't find them in stainless. So that's what everybody seems to be doing on them. So we'll weld that out with 309. Um, but we got the purge going. I'll show you guys how I got the machine set up um, right now. All we got is I've been running about 60 amps on this. Um, I got the pre-flow at about a second and the post flow is around 12. Seems to be working pretty good for me and we're just running, you know, 60 amps, taking our time, um, keeping the gas on it and they seem to be welding pretty good. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll start, we'll set up, start welding one. You guys can see how it's going to go.
So we got that thing wrapped up. Um, it turned out okay. I think the I think the welds could have been better on the outside. The inside they look perfect. They're all full pen, nice and clean. Um, I'm gonna go ahead now and let it cool down, and then I'm gonna clean it out real good inside with some brake clean, blow it out good. Just make sure there's nothing in it that can go into the engine of this truck. But you know, working in the high purity line of work, the inside is what's always mattered. So to me, it's you know that's kind of engraved in me, and I got to make sure it's clean inside when I'm done with it. But um, all in all, I'm happy with it. Something I was thinking here while I was welding that I know I've said multiple times is I run a Miller Sinker Wave at work every day, and it's one of the brand new ones that Miller just came out with that looks like a dynasty, but it doesn't have all the buttons. Um, and it's a really good machine. I, you know well with it 10 hours a day most of the time and the arc starts on it are, are nice and crisp perfect you know I got no complaints with it I come home and I run, I run this prime weld machine and what's funny is when I flip my hood down I can't tell which machine I'm welding with the the prime weld machine the arc starts are just as good the uh, everything about it, it it's just as good as the Miller I, I don't know how long it's gonna last you know that's what everybody asks well how long do you think it'll last I don't know you know, one of them Millers we got, we've already had to have a board changed in one of them, and they're three months old. So, like, I don't know if that really matters. You know, I think that the the Prime Weld machine, for what I'm doing here at home, is, is perfect for me. Um, and I feel like if anybody's on the fence about picking one up, I wouldn't be afraid of them. Um, I'm extremely happy with this machine. You know, and I, I like throwing that out there because the owner of Prime Weld, I mean, he really takes care of me. He's a great guy. And I feel like, you know, they're just good people to deal with. So I'm going to go ahead here and wrap this video up. Um, I don't know if we really helped anybody or if we uh, hurt anybody, but but uh, if anybody's got any questions or if anybody's got any advice on welding this stuff, you know, I'm all ears. I'd love to hear it. Um, but y'all have a great day.